Bamboo Lab released new 3D printer, H2S. I was thinking deeply in what angle I should do this video. Should it be just a review video or compare it to H2D? Because Bamboo Lab H2D is so well known, we cannot ignore the fact that those two printers are really similar. But they do have gay differences by targeting different consumers. That's why I think this video should help you understand is H2D or H2S better option for you. So let's get started. Bamboo Lab H2S is the biggest printer in the Bamboo Lab printer selection. The total print volume is 340 times 320 times 340, which is the true build volume that you can access fully with one nozzle. The main reason that makes the H2S to H2S is the single nozzle system. This makes the whole print head way smaller and lighter, which means it can print up to 30% faster than its big brother H2D. Visually, it looks really different than the previous dual nozzle system and many people might be confused by the look. Bamboo Lab A1 series print head look basically the same, but this is not the same, H2S hot end is way more advanced. This printer is equipped with 33 different sensors and 3 cameras that live monitor your print to detect failures automatically. In Bamboo Lab Studio or app, you have access to only one camera to monitor your print or record time lapse. You can use this printer to print almost any filament you can get your hands on. Nozzle, hotend and extruder are designed to handle crazy engineering filaments. The hotend can reach up to 350 degrees, boil plate up to 120 degrees and the active chamber heating up to 65 degrees. To make the workflow of printing engineering filaments even more convenient, AMS Tube Pro has built-in filament dryer with automatic venting. If you use Bamboo Lab filaments, then AMS knows automatically the correct drying settings and you don't have to do anything else than press start. Also, when the filament is dried, AMS Tube Pro can be your storage unit for those filaments, because it's iodide. And like H2D, you can use H2S for other tasks than just 3D printing, digital drawing and cutting, and of course laser engraving. But H2S supports only 10 watt laser, while H2D supports 10 and 40 watt laser. Unfortunately, I don't have any of them, so in this video, we have to focus only on 3D printing. Speaking about printing, the first print was of course a bench boat. I printed this with Bamboo Lab PLA metal. This doesn't have any metal fragments in, it's just PLA silk supposed to look like a metal. The bench is printed in 20 minutes, and I think this is the best bench boat I have ever printed. I will show you a lot more prints, but I don't comment them. I show you them and you can decide does it look decent or not. So next I printed two test models. One of them is the overhang test. By the test, we can see it managed to print successfully up to 50 degrees. Next I bring the torture test model. This is stairways. The challenge with this model are overhangs and thin, not supported structures on the sides. It's now time to print some multicolor prints. I found one model in Thingiverse that I really like. It's a bag with coffee beans. I started painting in Bamboo Lab Studio and it took me some time. I made sure every spot and edge is painted correctly, but I did miss some spots that I found out later. But anyway, I am going to print the bag with dual color PLA and cork PLA. Cork PLA is like wood filament, but instead of wood, it's filled with cork. Here I have to note, my cork filament was not dried properly, which affected the print quality. Well, here it is how it turned out. Meanwhile, I was printing with H2S, I also printed this model with H2D. For this model, I swapped the colors for contrast. Well, okay, I forget to put them in the right order in Bamboo Lab Studio, but this way it looks even better. Anyway, the print quality looks pretty much the same. But the reason why I printed another model of it is to compare single and dual nozzle system. With H2S, it took 5 hours and 10 minutes to print. With H2D, I printed this model with 2 hours and 1 minute. Both of those models weighed 35 grams and H2D produced 25 grams of waste. This is primarily the tower. On the other hand, H2S produced 137 grams of waste. This is the situation when the H2D have huge advantage over H2S, but still H2S can print multiple colors successfully. I did another multicolor print with H2D. This time I used three different colors. Again, the amount of waste is what it is, but the print itself turned out really well. The spot to look at is this white area where the A's are. A's are printed with black PLA. And when you switch between colors with so high contrast, you get bleed. 
Like white is not pure white because it mixed with the black a bit. Well, this is not the case over here. White colors are pure white, as good as it can be. Because I was in the mood of printing sharks, I wanted to use the huge print volume. So I printed one single color baby shark that is the original size of the model and one big shark that I scaled up about 250%. I made the shark as big as I can fit on the build plate. I'm using PLA with 0.16mm layer height. This print took me 11 hours to print. If I used regular 0.2mm layer height, it would take 7 hours to print. Those models turned out also without any issues. Expect the big shark tubes. They are a bit messed up. This happened because the model should not be that big and the bottom part of the tubes were floating. This is definitely user error instead of the printer. This is another surprise that printer released in 2025 can print PLA really well, but can it handle more difficult materials like ABS? ABS is pain to 3D print. Well, I know this because I have done this a lot. Printing ABS, the bigger you go, the more difficult it becomes. That's why I wanted to print one simple ways and max out I axis. So this ways is as big as it can possibly be. I am using regular third party ABS, it's cheap. I think I got it from 11 euros per spool, aka 12 to 13 dollars. It will do 20 hours to finish this print. To print ABS, the build plate is 90 degrees and active chamber heating is on at 60 degrees. ABS is so hard to print also because it warps madly. Here I also need to mention, I don't use any glue stick for this try. With ABS, layer separation is huge problem. This happens when part is unevenly heated. To avoid this, enclosure is must have, but sometimes even this is not enough. And active chamber heating is needed. But after a bit, well after 20 hours, the print was ready. I didn't rush to pull this out immediately. I let it cool down slowly for about two hours and then the print was perfectly released from the build plate and I don't see absolutely any issues. No warping, no layer separation and the print looks clean as hell. This is not common printing with ABS, especially so big. But I have even tougher cookie for this printer. Few years back I printed wind turbine. In this project I only used ABS because it meant to go outside and it was cheap. This mattered because the wind turbine was huge. At this time I used GDDEC Max 3. I used this because this had active chamber heating and it was big enough to fit the parts of the blades. Those parts of the blades were big and were not really designed for ABS. This type of model have two main issues if it comes to printing with ABS. First of all, the surface area where the blades attach to the boil plate is so small. If it start warping even a little bit, there is a chance that it will come loose. This happened a lot by the way, I had a tons of fail prints. Then the second issue is the back edge of the aerofoil profile. It's extremely thin. This is the area where the majority of the layer separation would took place. This also happened, but I fixed this um, manually. So now it's H2S time to shine. Again, I'm using same filament that I used for the ways. Same settings and no glue stick. Also no prime. Previously I used a lot of prime to reduce the warping as much as I possibly can. In total it will take a little bit more than 6 hours to print. After one and a half hour the progression looked like this. Before at this time I already had first signs of warping. But at the current moment I don't see any. Few hours into the print everything still looks fine. And now when the print is ready it still looks completely fine. I also let it cool down before I open the door. When it cooled down, this model also released itself, so it fell over. And if you look at this model, this is perfection. There is no issues with layer separation or warping. Surface quality looks excellent and is just beautiful model. I'm completely honest with you. I have used a lot of ABS in my life. But those two models that I just printed with H2D are the best ABS prints I have ever done in my life, period. I also printed one last model with ABS. This has a bit more detail than the previous two. And after removing supports, again perfection. The H2S performance blow me away. Absolutely insane. I received the printer about 3 weeks ago. But turning this time it had found a lot of use. If you already have H2D like I did, then I can say you don't feel really remarkable difference using H2D. As long as you do single color prints. This is the main difference between those two printers. H2D has dual nozzle system, 
but H2S has only one nozzle, like most of the 3D printers. H2S have slightly bigger true build volume and is a little bit faster. But there is one big thing more that sets H2D and H2S apart. This is the price. H2D with AMS is currently 2200 euros. H2S with AMS is only 1400 euros. This makes H2S way more affordable for many people and especially for people who don't find any need for dual nozzle system. I think choosing the right printer for you is mostly about the budget. If the H2D is too expensive, then the H2S might be the right choice for you. If I had to choose, I would buy H2D instead of H2S for only one simple reason. I value multi-material printing, especially when it comes to printing supports with different filament. My next project is screw bump and H2D made it literally possible. So sometimes when I need dual nozzle system, it's really nice to have it. Even though H2S would be enough for me, I think at least 90% of the times. Ironically, I told I would buy H2D, but I am actually using H2S way, way more. I think both of those printers are absolutely excellent printers and best ones I have ever used. H2S is not downgraded or worst version of H2D. They listen to community feedback and they give a chance to choose and feel your needs and everyone's needs are slightly different. And they keep doing it because somewhere end of this year they will release H2C which will have dual nozzle system plus nozzle changing system. I don't know more about this because the information is limited but I'm looking forward to see what the hell this will be. I hope this video was useful for you or you at least enjoyed it. But for now, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.